Good to see you today, Mr. Serling. What can I do for you? I'm getting old, and I think I deserve a statue of myself. Uh, Rod, you're four episodes into the series. Why would you think that? Because of my amazing voice. And how would a statue immortalize your voice? Well, the statue would talk. Obviously. All the time, Rod? No, not all the time. It would shout out some of my famous quotes throughout the day. Fam famous quotes? Okay, uh, you have those? I certainly do. Oh, like what? Let, come on, let's hear one. <clears throat> when is a man not a man? When he's reduced to something less by the society around him. Yeah, we really need to immortalize that one. Kids in the future will really benefit from that. Rod, please, let, let me hear another. <clears throat> Question. How can you climb a mountain of emotion? Answer. With an ice pick of stoicism and a Sherpa of your own psyche. Look, Rod, the studio doesn't even make statues. So here's what you can do. You could take uh, this half-inch tall nativity scene I seem to have lying around my office and call it a shrine to yourself. And then write the next episode. Or you can have this. What's this? It's your contract. You could take it home and nail it to your wall like a plaque. Because we don't need it anymore. So which one do you pick? <sighs> Sixteen millimeter shrine. They irritate the irritated. Flex perplexities. Poise puzzles. Magnify mysteries. Impose inquiries. And coagulate quandaries. But more importantly, they ask one question. Why would you make this? Hello everyone, welcome and thank you for listening. This is Why Would You Make This, the only podcast to get lost in its own world and refuse to leave it, even when we all ask the question, why would you make this? I am Jimmy Time, I am Time Commander on most social media. We are joined by Huge, how are you sir? Sir, I am good, how are you? I'm doing pretty well. Where are you on social media? Uh, you can find me at most social media platforms. I'm still in the rod voice a little bit. Uh, at Atomic Huge. Huge with an E-U-G. All right. We also joined by, of course, Jay Delta. How are you? I am good. Very good. Very, very good. Wagwan. Wagwan. And you can find me on the Jay Delta where I'm rooting for the second Civil War to just... Just happen. Come just, on. Just come on. Just, yeah, just come on. It's going to happen. Just let it happen. I just, I want to wear a blue uniform. That's Maybe all. this time, East, West. Who knows? That was, that was in the 90s. Oh, shit. Yeah, that was. All right, so then middle and then coasts. Ooh, that's. Ooh, that's rough. Yeah. <laughs> that's, uh, I mean, they're already surrounded. <laughs> <laughs> they're fighting a war on two Guess fronts. What side I'm on. <laughs> Although, it ain't our Navy will have no effect against them. Checks and balances, sir. <laughs> Checks and balances. <laughs> all, right, all right. Evenly matched, it seems. Okay. <laughs> all right, so we watched the 16 millimeter shrine which aired October 23rd, 1959, wherein Barbara Jean Trenton is a faded film star who lives in the past by constantly re-watching her old movies instead of moving on with her life. So her associates try to lure her out of her self-imposed isolation. Doesn't work. The, the phrase associates makes me think there's more of them. <laughs> there's two, right? There, one and a half? Well, yeah. What One is her employee. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And the other is her agent. I want to say agent. Yeah, yeah. is it agent? I, it. Hmm. I guess agent. I think maybe he was her agent or something. It's very unclear. Yeah. Twenty-two minutes. That's all we got. We gotta. <laughs> we don't have time to explain. It's not important who he is. Just why he's here. Yeah. All right. So, well, because of that short timeline, that's probably why it was lost in translation. Yeah. So the French called it "From Success to Decline." Oh. Mm. Right. Okay. And the Brazilian title was Beyond Imagination, the 16 millimeter shrine. And then we went over to Bad Translator. <laughs> you know, the number one Shock Jack Radio Bad Translator. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you go down there? Shut up, Mom. <laughs> go ahead, rip the knob off. They went ahead and called it 16 Mmm Temple. So sassy. It's a mmm. Mm. 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 <laughs> or maybe it's a 
Maybe it's like a, a pedophile movie. 16, mm, Temple. <laughs> I'm not watching that one. <laughs> no, no, no one should. Unless you're like, oh, we're in Europe. That's fine. That's fine. Wait, what? What are you accusing the entire continent of Europe of doing? Having a age of legality under 16? Like they have in, like, ten states here? Yep. <laughs> not, not that you're perfectly familiar with the age of legality in every single <laughs> continent or, or no. state by heart or anything. It doesn't matter. It's not the truth hour. It doesn't matter what I say. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're renaming it, the truth hour now. <laughs> Everything else is lies. That's it. That's just like the world. Now for the slander section <laughs> of the podcast. Oh, that's all of it. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, they also called the film Six to Ten Millimeters Temple. Oh, it varies in size. <laughs> yes, it's, it's a shrinking and growing, but it's not very useful. Like the X-Men are never going to call it up for, for help. Because <laughs> it's, really, it's, it's really not much. No, no. And it's not very small either. Like it couldn't go into, it wouldn't do anything really. <laughs> all right, so now let's move on to... The truth hour. (laughs) (laughs) Nothing but the truth. Only the truth. What's that song? You can't handle the truth. (laughs) (laughs) Show me the truth. Oh, wait, that's the money. (laughs) (laughs) You can buy it afterwards. (laughs) I love truth. Get off my truth. (laughs) You had me at truth. Yeah, this might be the best, uh, the best out. Oh, wait, no. <laughs> no, no, this, this is pretty good. The second this best out. This is a pretty good yeah. out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what was happening October 23rd, 1959? Uh, well, uh, Weird Al Yankovic was born. Oh. So that's a thing that happened. Mac the Knife was still number one in both the U.S. and the U.K. Wait, what? Mac the Knife? Mac the Knife? Is yeah. that a rapper? No, it's a song. But, like. Mac the Knife? What does that mean? It's a guy. He's called Mac the Knife. Oh. It was Sinatra covered it once. That's why most people... But that's not who made it famous. That's some other guy. I mean, I know it's controversial, but like, Sinatra was trash. What? Like, come on. Have you ever heard... (laughs) As an Italian, I cannot agree with you. (laughs) No matter how much I do. (laughs) (laughs) Have you ever heard him actually... He just like babbled and like... That was... 90% 90% of his career. <laughs> oh. When he was very drunk. <laughs> when he was tipsy. Oh. And he had that one song <laughs> that they used in Evangelion. Then he was Aces. Well, you know, that one song. That, that's the one. Never mind the one where he talks about, like, ants and stuff. And the one where he's going to bim, bam, bomb the broom, bram, brim, and all that stuff. Those are real yeah. lyrics. No, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. There's no defense. I'm sorry. They, they call him lyrical genius. <laughs> a fish is an animal that swims in a brook. Give me a million dollars, you dirty crooks. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm having flashbacks to fucking a Bruce Willis movie. I will not name. All right. So what else happened? Oh, The Mummy was the most popular, or which was the most, or maybe still is, I don't know, the most popular horror film of all time was released. Another years. famous Tom Cruise movie. That, well, not that one <laughs> yet. Well, the, no. The it's, original one. It's the truth hour, I said it. So uh, yeah, so, so, well, he does not age, so he probably wasn't all of them. <laughs> he also does his own stunts, and he's great. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. Yep. That's some truth. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you may vaguely remember that... A week ago, <laughs> Lee Harvey Oswald left the U.S. to become a, a citizen of the USSR. I vaguely, yeah, yeah. I vaguely recall that. Well, he was told to leave, and he <laughs> slit his wrist in a hotel. Oh. So he died, and he was never No, able he to... was rushed to a hospital. Oh, right. He was found by his uh, he was rushed state appointed. He was to a hospital? Come on. I'm just going to Jimmy, t- Jimmy take 10. that. Jimmy 10. I'm just going to take that. Come on. And I'm just gonna copy it over, over and over again for the rest of the episode, the whole. Hour. No matter how long we talk, I'm just gonna delete that and then copy that time over. And you're just gonna have to live with it forever. Come on. Come, what? Come? No. All right. Uh, I also thought that maybe we should let people know where we are right now in history. Oh. Oh. All right. Yeah. I was going a different way. No, right. different way. No, right now in our history in real time. Oh, okay. Uh, all of the UN just laughed at our president. Oh, like literally. Like yeah. real, like us. Like the us today, here yeah. we are. We have terrible leadership. <laughs> Is that more or less ridiculous than our president going to the United Nations to say he doesn't believe in globalism? 
I mean, uh, there's a lot of problems there. Or, or that China respects his there's a, like very, said, very big There's brain. a lot of problems there. Yeah. There's a lot of problems there. Like when he said, we give money to poor countries. How come they don't give us money? <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, there's, there's problems. There are problems there. So let's go back in time and make America great again. By letting everybody know, everybody know what's going on and birthday, or excuse me, my birthday dot ninja, okay. and let you know what was going on in the past life. Okay. Because <laughs> people have to know about that now. Yeah, here we go. So in your last incarnation, if you were born October 23rd, 1959, you were a female near Siberia in the year 1025, who was once again a handy craftsman or mechanic. I'm sense. seeing a trend here. Yeah, yeah. However, oh, oh. according to a brief psychological profile of your past, <laughs> life <laughs> you also like to travel investigate and could have been a detective or spy oh wait. shit so wait a minute you're telling me that weird al yankovic <laughs> is a detective and or spy you're gonna tell me that's what you're gleaning that after this. learning that information you wouldn't go of course that's the perfect cover <laughs> everyone trusts him <laughs> He just makes silly songs. He's That's just the silliest. He could do no harm. He could never find out all my secrets against the state. <laughs> <laughs> and even if he did, what if he parodied them in a music video? Oh, it'd be hilarious. It'd be worth the life in Guantanamo. <laughs> <laughs> well, now that we confirm that Weird Al is, uh, in fact, a spy. Yeah. I guess we should move on to the best hour. <laughs> Our favorite hour? Yeah! <laughs> the Troy McClure Hour! Hello, I'm Troy McClure. You'll recognize me from such Hollywood classics as I am going to war, my love. Please don't talk to my brother. Or Downtown Flagler Street. Today, we're here to talk about aging gracefully in your new retirement community. So... Director Mitchell Leeson. Leeson? Why are your name so hard? What's up, Mitch? <laughs> he is known for the 1939 Death Takes a Holiday, 1940 Remember the Night, and the 1951 The Mating Season. <laughs> the Mating, the mating. Season. Is it like a documentary? <laughs> uh, no, they didn't, they didn't have documentaries oh, back yeah, then. Right. Those were what? invented in, in the future. Documentaries were just like those little clips they put in school. Where it's like, if there's a bomb, get under your desk. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's that, it. That and... Disney. And, I was going to say Disney. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Disney throwing animals off cliffs and yeah, filming it. And, and doing racist stuff. And going, no, it's not. <laughs> Prove it. Because they're not black. That's why it's not racist. They're animals. <laughs> or, or mystical birds or whatever. It's fine. A family company. <laughs> we also have Ida Lupino, who plays Barbara Jean Trenton. You'll recognize her in the 1941 High Sierra, the 1941 Ladies in Retirement, and the 1943 The Hard Way. Finally, we have Martin Belson. Everyone's just shaking their head. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Why would I recognize a famed film actress right before World War II? No, who, <laughs> I had better things to do. I wasn't living a life of luxury and watching movies all day. It was the Depression. And then the war. <laughs> and then the war, yeah. <laughs> no respect for any of these people. They lived a high life during the worst time. Kicking the cans and whatnot. No, no. That was the middle class. <laughs> kicking can. Wait, if you got a can to kick, I don't want to know you. You wait. You, not only do you have a can to kick, but you have time to kick it. Wait a minute, <laughs> Mister Moneybags. Where's your boat? So finally, Martin Belsam plays Danny Weiss. You recognize him? You actually will might recognize him yeah. in the oh, 1957 yeah. Twelve Angry Men, 1960 yes. Psycho, yes. the 1975 mm -hmm. All the President's Men. Yeah. Yes. Uh, all right, there you go. Good. So you can see the full cast and crew at IMDb.com. I, uh, I, <laughs> you can cut it. No, God. what do you got? I dug this one. You like, oh yeah? I like this one. Oh, yeah. really? Okay, yeah. good for I, you. I wanted to spit at the screen at the oh, end. Really? I was like, really? Wow. What the oh, is this? Oh, oh, no. It took a turn. Oh. It took a turn. It I, start, you liked it until. Because I legitimately did not remember this episode, and so it was Me really either. going in fresh, which yeah. was yeah. great, because yeah. like 90%, I, I know him front to back. So this one, I was like, what's going to, what's going to happen? 
I legitimately didn't know. And then that turn at the end, I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I don't remember it. Yeah. I purposely blocked it out. It's the Twilight Zone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's uh, start the film. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Opening narration. Picture of a woman looking at a picture. <laughs> I, I paused immediately. Every time I've read this, I've laughed at it. Yes. How? Famed, How is... famed writer, Rod Serling. Yes! <laughs> no! Famed dart thrower, Rod Serling. <laughs> picture of a woman looking at a picture. Movie great of another time. Once brilliant star in the firmament no longer a part of the sky. Eclipsed by the movement of earth and time. Barbara Jean Trenton, whose world is a projection room, whose dreams are made out of celluloid. Barbara Jean Trenton, struck down by hit and run years ago. <laughs> Sorry. Struck down by hit and run years and lying on the unhappy pavement, trying desperately to get the license number of fleeting fame. <laughs> I love that. Fame dart thrower. <laughs> yeah. Dude. Would you not want a statue to tell you that from time to time? <laughs> <laughs> let's go. Let's go ahead and knock down that Lucille Ball statue. <laughs> Get rid of that oh, thing in New York. Please. Yeah. So we enter the foyer. A woman, Sally, knocks on the theater room door and enters where there's no answer. Miss Trenton appears from behind the projector screen. This startles the woman, and she leaves. Well, <laughs> she can't find her. Yeah. yeah. She then, then uh, Barbara Jean comes out behind the screen. She sees her. Yeah. They make eye contact. <laughs> yeah. One, two, three. Oh, hi, Sally. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> but they're, it's not like it's picture, picture, picture. They're in the same shot. Yeah. They're in the same shot. And then, and then it cuts to like her holding her neck. She's just, mimicking the screen. Yeah. yeah. Oh, hi, Sally. Ah! Oh, man. Yeah. It's great. <laughs> so is the indication there that she was behind the screen, mm -hmm. shadowing herself on the screen, like as if she was acting, but not, in, but not in front of the screen, behind the screen? Well, yeah, because on screen her was facing that direction, so she has to face that direction. But not in front of the screen. Well, no, that'd be silly. <laughs> <laughs> of course, you don't want you don't want a, a larger version of you behind you. Oh, that's, that's that'd be intimidating. Yeah, you'd never be able to finish the scene. <laughs> so outside, we get a knock on the front door, and Sally welcomes Mr. Weiss. They agree Miss Trenton has been spending far too much time in that room, and that she needs to come out of there. Inside the theater, Danny tries to be friendly, but Barbara suggests having a drink at 11 a.m. and glamorizes movies from 25 years ago, so he gets clinical. It is the 1950s, so, you know, have a drink at 11 a.m. Yeah. Get a little sauce, and that'll fix you. Oh, yeah. Danny says he set up a meeting with a movie studio for her, and she's acting like it's 1934 again. Oh, we're going to do pictures with Jerry. Jerry, uh... Uh, Resnick? Like, what? No. Huh? Jerry Herdman. Maguire. Jerry, that's the Tom Cruise thing again. <laughs> oh, oh right. yeah, he's good. He's yeah. Yeah. Ah. yeah. Yeah. Does his own stunts, I believe. I've heard that. I've heard that's true, yeah. <laughs> uh, Danny reminds her of her age and of the times, and she says, go to the devil. Go to the <laughs> devil. <laughs> yep. You and your weather reports. Like... You just can't, like, back then, you can't say go to hell. No, so that, is that was too, like, vulgar. Ooh. Go to the devil. Go to the devil. Like, you just go straight to the ruler of hell? Is that, like, <laughs> you don't think? There's no hierarchy in Yeah, in come hell. on. There's no lies. Like, that motherfucker's just gonna be waiting there for, like, you're not gonna have to make an appointment or anything? I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> if only there was some sort of truth time frame that could tell us. Mm, yeah, it's a shame we don't know. No. Uh, Jerry shakes her out of, oh no, yeah, not Jerry, uh, what's his name? Danny. Danny shakes her out of it, and she decides to go to the meeting. <laughs> you know, give her the old school, I'll just shake you around until you snap oh, out of it. Well, yeah, if a woman's being unreasonable, you just, you just shake them, mm -hmm. knock their brain straight. And, and they know they should, because if they don't, then the next way to snap them out of it is to slap them, so. <laughs> I have seen Airplane. I don't have the time to take turns, so. <laughs> She's got to do it the first time around. 
So we go to the movie studio and everyone enters and meets uh, Mari Saul. And he explains the part to Barbara. She'll be playing a 40-ish mother. <gasps> oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Which is her actual age out of the time of filming. And Barbara insists that it's a waste of her time and she'll never play a mother and not a star. So Marty verbally assaults her in a way that if she wasn't a woman in the 50s, he would have been arrested. <laughs> like, <laughs> he wrecks her verbally. He, he like, straight up is like, yo, any work your <laughs> old ass is going to get yep. is just charity. Yes. Ugh. Yeah, I might as well just throw that part right in the trash. Yeah, he 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 refers to her and her resume or her acting talents as an aging broad with a scrapbook. Ah, ah, that's ah, uh. the fifties, folks. Yeah, drink it in, drink it in, man. Go, go take off your socks and be homeless outside, <laughs> you bum. And then I love it because after he like just talks down to her a little time and she runs away crying. Then then Danny walks over to Marty and he says to the 55-year-old Marty, when you're over the hill, <laughs> remind me to kick you when you're down. <laughs> when? When does that happen? Well, like, in I an hour or? Back then, over the hill didn't mean in terms of age because, you know, back then you would just die at like 40 or 49. So, oh. you know, it, it was more about... Success. Mm. Right? You're, you're on the decline of your oh, success in life. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, I get it. That fat old dude. <laughs> <laughs> so we go back to the foyer, and Danny apologizes to Barbara for not listening. Uh, yeah, for not listening to her. And Barbara dives headfirst into mental illness, outright stating she wants to literally shut the blinds and have no contact with the outside world and declares it is the 1930s again. <laughs> she goes Howard Hughes, starts peeing in jars, <laughs> not cutting her nails. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, she says she wants a time where uh, men didn't wear undershirts and there wasn't rock and roll and <gasps> jukeboxes. <sighs> Wait. Guys didn't used to wear undershirts under their shirt? Like, no, I mean, like, openly. Oh, like, all right. Like, I, they all wore <laughs> three-piece suits. They covered those undershirts. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but at the same time, I refuse to believe that men wear undershirts under their three-piece suit like that. Yo, already a three-piece suit is way too many layers. Right? Like, dude, the t-shirt and shorts is almost too many layers. Like, oh, my God, come on. Oh, no. Climate change and all that. Well, yeah, that's true. Oh, yeah, that's it was still it was still the ice age back then. They, <laughs> they needed to have thick, warm clothes. <laughs> yeah, they needed they needed thick, heavy three piece suits to protect them from the cold and saber tooth tigers. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So she tells Danny that it's the 1930s again. That let's call up all my old friends and we'll have a party. And Danny reminds her, "Your friends are dead. They're all dead <laughs> or dying in other states." <laughs> <laughs> he says that she has built a graveyard for herself and keeps wishing for dead things. Uh, and then he leaves and she locks the door in fear. Okay, so wait a minute. Is he an enabler or not? Like, I'm trying to figure this out because like, he's like, I'm, oh, I'm sorry. I, I shouldn't have made you go to this meeting. But at the same time, all your friends are dead. Stop it, you crazy old bitch. I, I don't, like, I think he's like, it, like natural 1950s. Let me just shock her out of it. You know, instead of being her agent and being like, listen, I got this part for you, but it's a part you don't usually take. It's the only one I could get. It'll be a challenge for you. Yeah, it's a new role. People will think you're brilliant for taking such a leap. And and Sidney's like, I got a part. You know, uh, a part. Let's go see about it. Yeah, let me keep it an absolute secret to you. Yeah, yeah. That'll that'll make it easy for you to take. That's how, the scene starts, too. The the guy's like, uh, so... uh, Danny told you about the part, right? And she's like, no, but I'm sure I'll be fine. And he, and he looks at Danny like, uh. <laughs> like <laughs> he knows. Yeah. Yo, dude, come on. Like, we both know how she's going to react. Yeah. One of us is going to have to shake her or slap her. <laughs> <laughs> I, I pulled my shoulder out coming over here, trying to turn the wheel of my big automobile. <laughs> There's no power steering back then. You know how many saber-toothed tigers I had to avoid? <laughs> Wait a minute. Yeah, what? Did you just get that from an episode of Frasier that you no, saw the other day? No, what? I'm not kidding. I watched an episode of Frasier 24 hours ago, <laughs> and Niles 
gets it. No, we're doing a whole thing now. Okay. Niles is get uh Niles is going. He has no choice but to get a small car. Yeah. And he's like, oh my arm. And it's like, oh my god, did you uh get into an accident? He's like, no, uh, there's no power steering, and so I had to turn the turn the wheel. And now my shoulder's killing me. Nope. <laughs> yeah. Nope. It's in you. Okay. It's in you like it's in sure, me. Sure. Yeah. I'm secretly David Hyde Pierce. <laughs> That's not what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> I meant secretly quoting it. You don't even know it. <laughs> So, blackout. <laughs> <laughs> That's the end. That's the end of, of uh, the first half. And they're all dead. <laughs> Everyone's dead. Except your dreams, which are also dead. <laughs> so we go to uh, the theater again, and Barbara is slowly laughing maniacally at her old films. Ha ha! 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 percent she's lost it there's no coming back just seal the room off and burn it down <laughs> which goes yeah. to what you wait one of you thought when we were trying to guess what this episode would be one of you said arson arson who what i don't remember that oh yeah. i think you said arson i yeah. said arson I pretty sure you said sure, arson. Yeah. it's yeah. arson yeah it was like how are they gonna how are her associates gonna coax her out of this house and you're like arson oh, fine. they burn the house they burn the house down yeah that, that sounds like they're gonna say yeah that sounds like me yeah my goal is evil twin <laughs> uh, you don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe Miss Sally will take her mask off at the end and reveal it's her. <laughs> I'll fool you. <laughs> Why? Okay. Oh, no. I'm not even gonna let you. Nope. Mickey Rooney away. That is not where I was going with that. <laughs> all right. So in, yeah, Barbara's laughing at all the film she was in. Outside, Danny arrives and learns that uh, Sally, the housekeeper, hasn't seen her for a while, and that sometimes she swears she sees her on that screen. Yes, that's her in the film, Sally. <laughs> I don't have time to explain to you the technology <laughs> that your employer has used to keep you... Like, how do you think she affords this house and her employee? Like, what do you think her job was? Oh, I always thought that if you were pretty enough, they just gave you things. <laughs> oh, that's... that's no, actually... that's... You're right, you're right. Yeah. Ugly broad. <laughs> The old hag. Yeah, old ugly hag. So anyway, inside the theater, Danny tells Barbara Jean, or uh, Barbara, whatever, yeah, Barbara Jean, that Jerry heard and and whatever that the old Jerry's here. <laughs> McGuire. Mag- no. Oh. No. No McGuire. Uh, and she's like, oh, oh, yes, of course, I'll go see him. Let me go get ready. And she runs and gets ready, and she comes into the parlor. And she sees Jerry, and he, he looks like an old Walt Disney knockoff, <laughs> wearing, like I already said, wearing Mickey Rooney racist Chinese character from Breakfast at Tiffany's, Tiffany's style glasses. Hara! The giant Coke bottle. Yeah. Dude. It's racist. <laughs> it's gotta be. Because he also has buck teeth in his face. Like uh. That's just his normal face, but <laughs> it's, it's racist somehow. He's dead now, right? He's gotta be. I hope so. I don't want his family coming after me. <laughs> Wait, yeah, but... <laughs> I hope he's dead. I, I, I hope his family doesn't come after me. Because I, I said some bad stuff. I hope That's he's why. dead. <laughs> yeah. I hope his family's dead. <laughs> ain't nobody coming for me. Nobody coming for me. And if they ain't dead, we'll fix that. <laughs> but, yeah. So, she's upset because he's old. And she admits that she expected the past to greet her here and then demands that everyone goes away while sobbing. Oh, I thought we were going to do a film. Just leave. Just leave. I, I love when she's like, but what, I, I thought, are you still acting? He's like, no, nah, I run a grocery store. And she's like, Ugh, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> so he runs a chain of grocery stores and she was like, Oh, you're a farmer! Like, <laughs> that was the reaction she had. Like, yeah, how are you a farmhand now? <laughs> so you pick the vegetables yourself? <laughs> so we go back into the theater, and Barbara watches old films again with young Jerry Henderson, or whatever his name is. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> At this point, just call him McGuire. Yeah, just call him Jerry <laughs> McGuire. <laughs> All right, fine. Uh, and she talks to the projection and wishes she could be up there with him. Oh, I wish, I wish, I wish blur out to... The end of the episode. Right? Yeah, right? Nothing it's happens. Over. You didn't have to. So Sal- Sally knocks on the door 
and enters when there's no answer, and she discovers the room is totally empty, but then screams in horror when she sees something else and drops her tea tray. Clang, 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 clang. At that point, when that happened, I was like, okay, so she saw her in the room again. <laughs> yeah. I just didn't uh, notice her somehow again. Again, out. blacked out. They're done. You, know, you don't need to finish it. It's over. <laughs> yeah, it's over. Nothing happens. Uh, later, Danny arrives, and Sally says that Barbara isn't here like you and I are. So, so Danny turns on the projector, and he sees Barbara's all of uh, oh, he sees all of Barbara's old friends, young together in her house for a party, like she was saying before. And then he sees Barbara, but it's old Barbara, not young Barbara. What? In the screen, that none of what? this makes sense. Oh my! Let's all have a party. Come, let's go to the backyard. <laughs> Danny, no, Barbie, come back, come back, Barbie, no! But she turns around. Blows him a kiss, drops her scarf, and runs away with young Jerry Maguire. Thank you. <laughs> that's all we wanted. Yeah, that's it. I hear he does his own stuff. Uh, yeah, well, you know, I mean, he really dropped that scarf, yeah. <laughs> he really climbed those stairs. <laughs> there must have been six, seven of them? I couldn't even tell. Oh, boy. So, uh, yeah, yeah, it looks and blows a kiss into the camera. Drops the scarf, walks away, the film reel ends. <laughs> but, yo, how, like, I didn't know that filmmaking was such a drastically new concept that they couldn't understand looking into the camera. <laughs> like, they didn't get help, like, moving projection screen. Like, oh, no, don't look into this. He's not on the screen. He's off. He's off look off the screen. Look to the side. Hey, I mean, if you, look, if you look directly into the camera, it'd be like you were looking at the screen. That wouldn't make any sense at all. I can't believe filmmaking was such a new concept there. They were like, and her wish comes true. That's the twist. That's it. Yeah. The wish she wished to be up there and she was. And, and she was. That's it. That's it. Wasn't even her birthday or anything like <laughs> liar, liar. <laughs> <laughs> ah, she didn't even have any kids to like the power of a child's love. Like, no, none of that. Shooting star. No, no she was inside. Nope. Monkey paw, nothing. <laughs> she didn't have a pig's hoof, nothing. And, and there's not even, we don't even. <laughs> the house pig. Yeah. <laughs> she could have had a fancy pig hoof. <laughs> a fancy. Got a couple of wishes made. Well, the if you get the fancy, fancy pig hoof, you don't get any of the downsides. But if you get the house pig that's hoof, that's, that's when you get is. you get the you get the oh, splash back. Okay. But yeah, there wasn't even like a downside. Like, I wish I was back in the movies. Okay, there you go. There it is. What's the downside? Except I guess, in theory, if like you turn the projector off, does she cease existing? Right. That's my theory. What like how else would she exist? In, in what reality would that? Well, if the if Sally was saying that she saw her on screen before, <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. that's implying that she's just going back and forth, and that now she's just spending more and more time there. She's less connected here, so I just assume she's just going to keep going back and forth. No, it seemed to me it seemed like she was saying goodbye forever. I'm not coming back. Yeah, I'm living, oh, I'm oh living yeah, in the I'm movie. just saying like if she wanted to, she could just come back. Oh, so you're saying she's some sort of screen walker, and <laughs> like we have to give it a name. <laughs> She she's consistently had this like this wish isn't the first time she's been in the screen. She's had this pa- yeah she's had this power before. So then it's not even a twist like. <laughs> well, the twist is Danny's out of a job because he's got one less client now. <laughs> Yo, he's been out of a job. She hasn't had work in twenty five <laughs> years. True. What kind of agent are you, dude? <laughs> <laughs> the best one in Hollywood. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, he's just living off her. Oh, he gets all her royalties now, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, then yeah, stay on the screen. Yeah. Oh no, don't go. Uh, Goodbye. <laughs> Click. We don't know what happened to her. Sally, I've got a job for you. Oh, her film collection? It caught on fire. Oh yeah. <laughs> and right back to the arson. Oh yeah. We yeah. Did oh, it. there it, it is. It was arson. Arson full circle. So Sally leaves in shock, and Danny turns off the projector, presumably killing her forever. <laughs> like, <laughs> <yeah>. No. <laughs> Uh, when leaving, he notices the scarf that Barbara dropped in the movie on the real floor in the real house. Okay, hold on. (laughs) Perhaps it was dropped by an evil twin. (laughs) Ah. (laughs) Sally was just hiding behind the screen and threw it out. (laughs) Right? No. Uh, so he picks it up and smells it, and then he says, to wishes, Barbie, to the ones that come true. 
Why does he smell it? <laughs> yeah, to make sure it was real? I don't know. It smells like her perfume. Nobody could just spray a cloth. <laughs> <laughs> or, uh, I don't know. Maybe mm. that wasn't a handkerchief. It was a rag soaked in gasoline <laughs> used for the arson. And then he smelled it, passed out, whole thing's a death hallucination. <laughs> Baboom! From the second you said, or. <laughs> I'm just shaking my head like, no. But, but the death hallucination happens after the crazy stuff. <laughs> it's, it's a death flashback. <laughs> He's like, you're probably wondering how I got here, me. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's a death time loop. <laughs> Oh, he started the fire! Oh, okay. And he's, he caught himself in the, his own time loop. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Turns out they're all in a snow globe. <laughs> what a great episode of the Twilight Zone this was. <laughs> wow, this twist got better. So, uh, like, does that count as us remaking it? Is that the, did we just... Yep. Yeah, that's it. That was the Hollywood thinking cap. <laughs> well, let me do the closing narration first. Uh, oh. To the wishes that come true. To the strange mystic strength of the human animal who can take a wishful dream and give it a dimension of its own. To Barbara Jean Trenton, movie queen of another era, who has changed the blank tomb of an empty projection screen into a private world. It can happen in the Twilight Zone. It can happen. Your wishes can come true. Why not? Yeah. Don't criticize my writing. I'm Rod Serling. (laughs) So, yeah. Let's put on the old Hollywood thinking cap. And how can we remake this if it came out today? This gem. This, yeah, because you have to. How would you do that? How would you pull that one off? Uh, it's tough considering this was 22 minutes in, encapsulated in three scenes. You know, it like how do they fill it, this time? Yeah, it was so quick. But my my idea would be I'd borrow from like uh, Black Mirror. Okay. Like in the latest season of Black Mirror, they have the technology where they can like upload their brain to the cloud, mm-hmm. and they do that sort of thing where her brain gets uploaded to the movies, and like she gets to live. Same basic lazy oh, twist, right, yeah. but you know, actually upload her consciousness into. That's what I was thinking too. But like mine was that like she, once. Same thing, like, she would upload herself into the internet, yeah. and now, and but because she's so arrogant, she would just start infecting other people's movies and TV shows. Oh, uh, God. So okay. you would just start seeing her, like, who's Long the boss? Lawnmower man. Yeah, like, she's just in everything, and right. so, yeah. I, same thing, internet, obviously. Uh, but my idea was that, like, you know, when she's on Netflix, she realizes, holy crap, I gotta do this same dumb show a thousand times a day over and over again, and everybody keeps watching it, and it's just me, and it's, and all now right. She, now she can't escape. She can't escape. Oh, I'm stuck in the past, but this time I hate it. All right. Like, like the real past, like the real past. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so why would you make this? Uh, well, first off, this film had a lot of parallel parallels to Sunset Boulevard, which was also a yeah. film about an aging Hollywood actress who was like, I'll, I'll make my great comeback, and all my friends will be in the film again, and it'll be excellent, and it'll work well, and, eh, not really. <laughs> Oops, I killed my husband. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Oops. Uh, yeah, but obviously it, it puts that Twilight Zone twist in yeah. here as well, but she does, and it's horrible. All right, whatever. But it's really not, because she just gets to live in the screen. Uh, yeah, so it's... Yeah. Uh, also, there's only, like, two tropes, because we also want to talk about the tropes that happen in these things. There's only really two tropes that happen that I want to talk about, which are the same thing, which was, uh, jerk ass has a point, is the name of a trope, <laughs> and, uh, the reason you suck speech is another trope, and they're both the same thing, which yeah. is when Marty Saul is like, listen, you old hag. <laughs> yeah. Everything we give you is charity. You're garbage. Go home and cry. Oh, wow. Here's an unanswerable He's question. What's the concept of... Is there a concept of time when she's just in there in the screen? Like, okay, she goes in there. It's like, okay, we're going to have a party. It's like, all right, now what? Uh, yeah, like, is it just next scene and then she she feels fulfilled? Like, it's over or... Yeah. Oh, is it the kind of shit where she thinks like, oh, this is this is great, but she's really just trapped in that one little room with the actors who are stuck on a, a loop? Uh, yeah. Hmm, maybe. That's a better twist. Mm-hmm. You lazy-ass Rod Serling. That, <laughs> get a better dartboard. Isn't that Click? Uh, is it? Kind of, the Adam Sandler movie. He just keeps fast-forwarding his life. 
Um, and well, then 20 years in the future, his, life, his wife's like, you just fast forward every night. I know the time loop is a lot of Star Trek episodes. Yeah, that's why I stopped watching. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't keep track of what was real and what wasn't. It's mostly not. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out at the end, uh, Picard is an autistic boy in a snow globe. <laughs> in a snow globe. <laughs> He's in the snow globe. <laughs> <laughs> Number one. <laughs> Uh, all right, that was that was it. That's all. <laughs> we didn't have a lot to talk about. The episode, sorry. Right? Dude, nothing happened. <laughs> no. <in> that episode. <laughs> it was just it. Literally, the episode was about a woman slowly falling into mental illness, and isn't that interesting? If we entertained that, <laughs> <laughs> and then she finally descends, but her wish comes true. Ascends. Oh, ascends because <laughs> she dies. Yeah, and it's a death hallucination a, in heaven. Yeah. Christian heaven. Well, I mean, come yeah, on. I mean, obviously, it's the 1950s. <laughs> I mean, I'm not an animal. <laughs> so, the next episode is an ad executive, Gig Young, under pressure at his job, visits his old hometown, only to find himself returned to his childhood. <sighs> <laughs> I despair. Buys this episode. This is one of the worst. Yeah, really worst. Yeah. Just so you know, it's consistently listed among the best on like a lot of the lists online. I, I can't stand it. We'll get into it when we when we do that episode. Right. But I can't stand it. Yeah. What do you What do you think? What do you uh, think is gonna my, my I mean, duh. He he goes in the past and changes the present. Uh, but I presume Twilight Zone. So he he stops existing. Oh. Yeah, my my idea was he somehow like ruins his life and yeah. you know now he can't go back. And... Yeah, like he instead like he's like oh little boy don't become a business executive it's horrible go to the farm. I mean, he's a homeless man with no socks on the side. <laughs> yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. I wish, <laughs> I wish, <laughs> I'll shoot it right now. <laughs> the homeless man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're faking. You got socks. Bang. <laughs> You know, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> Cut that, I dare you. <laughs> yeah, wow. <well. laughs> no, no, I gotta keep the meh in. That's important. They need to hear me give up. <laughs> oh. All right, so, uh, you know, that was the episode. Join us next time. Uh, please go to victoryprowrestling.com. When is the next? October 29th is the next show for. M- 27th? I'm pretty sure. I think it's the 9th. Oh. What does that calendar say? That's of this it month. Is not tw- one. Oh. 29th. Oh, oh that's this month. This month. <laughs> this month. <laughs> At the last weekend of October, check out Victory Pro Wrestling live in Center Reach for VPW Presents Monster Mash. Mm. Well, I will Monster be... Monster Bash or Monster Mash? I thought it was Monster Mash. No, I want to look it up. No. Oh, all right. No, well, I want to look it up. And because I, just, I just wrote it down. We know it's four weeks from September 29th. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Then we just go to the old. But yeah. So October 27th. Oh, October 27th. Just yeah. like I said, VPW presents. Monster Bash. Monster Bash. Because Monster Mash was probably copyrighted. Copy. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's the real thing that they ripped off of. Yes. That's yeah. that's correct. This is a bash with monsters in it. I will be there. Puppet Delta will be there. Uh, do we still have a title? Uh, yes, I am the currently okay. official sanctioned New York State champion. Uh, unofficial official? Look, fuck, fuck that nonsense. Just, just uh, I am the officially sanctioned New York State okay, champion. Okay, good. That's how it is. That's how it is. No that, ups or butts. That other guy, Steve Gipke, has the other belt, which was not officially sanctioned. That can't be a Gipke? Gipke. Gipke. I figured, I thought he was like a local kid and he was Steve Poughkeepsie. Oh, maybe that's it. But he's from Jersey. Is Poughkeepsie in Jersey? Oh, I don't know. No, it isn't. No, it isn't? Is it's, it? It's close, right? No. no. <laughs> it's kind of close. Yeah, it's got. It's, it's close to Albany, right? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> so go to victoryprowrestling.com for all things related to Delta and that show. Yes. Or you can follow me online at DJ Delta. There you go. So please go, please go to... Oh, you, you have stuff too, right? Sorry. Yeah, you can follow Tom Cruise at <laughs> Tom Cruise to get all updates on uh, 
famous quotes and stunts from Tom Cruise. I wish he had a Twitter. I'd follow it. He does. I follow him. Really? Yes. Oh, my God. (laughs) Straight up. Wow. Get on there. Wait. Don't I follow him? (laughs) No, I do. I do follow him. Boom. Followed. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. (laughs) You you are both currently following (laughs) the highest followed parody account on Twitter right now. Wait, wait. No, he's got the check mark. It's real. He's got the check mark. It's real. (laughs) Oh, wait. Maybe not. No. It's actor, producer, running in movies since 1981. (laughs) 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 Oh, man. Wait. Wait a minute. This is fair. But he's got the check mark. <laughs> Yo, this motherfucker. Look, I, I believe in Tom Cruise. There's no way he's that self-aware. I think he might be. Yo, Yo the man is like, wh- what's what's the Scientology equivalent of like Jesus? Like you're just below the top guy. Zenu? Well, Zenu's son. What's Zenu's son's name? Son of Zenu. <laughs> yeah, Tom Cruise, son of Zenu. If we go by Godzilla rules, it's Zenu Jr. Yeah, Zenu, Z- yeah Tom Cruise, a.k.a. Zenu Jr., like, he's he's got enough power to be self-aware. All right. Cool. He did Tropic, Tropic Thunder, so. All right. Yeah, it, it, it's real. It's his, it's his deal. It's his deal. <laughs> I just called him up. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah I, I got him on the line. All right, so after you follow Tom Cruise, <laughs> go to www.ymt.com for all things Why Would You Make This, uh, including ways to listen to this episode if you did not use iTunes or Google Play, and also a link to our YouTube where we officially have 1,000 subscribers! Yeah. Meh, 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 meh. Even though we haven't released a video in six months! <laughs> yeah. And I've had nothing to do with this YouTube, <laughs> but yet I will say... Yeah, yeah, that's all right. Jump on the bandwagon, ride the coattails. It's, right. it's coming. September is like literally my busiest month of the year. So, <laughs> yeah. let me know, baby. We'll, it's it's going to happen eventually. It's content. coming up. We got some, we got, we're, build, we're building props and, and, pep, yeah. and puppets and things. It's all happening. <laughs> You're supposed to strike while the iron's hot, but we really like that that part where you have to reheat the iron and you get like aggressively because you're like, oh my god, it's going out! Quick, we're all gonna die. <laughs> That's the good part for us. It's That's like it's like. like when the guy making the stuff is blind, so he's like hitting it, and they're like, "No, no, it's not even, it's not even melting anymore. It's not <laughs> malleable. You got to put it back in the thing." Oh, we're striking before the iron's hot. That's uh, what we're doing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Wait, but he's blind. Look, we don't we don't discriminate <laughs> it's here. Not, yeah, let's we don't. Anyway. So yeah, victorprowrestling.com, why would you make this dot com? Uh, the intro music is of course Falling Off Your Love by Kill Paris. And uh, for you, J Delta, I am Jimmy Time, and please remember that without the mistakes of others, we'd be forced to endure the pain of failure ourselves. Support the arts. Tom Cruise. <laughs> Call me Tom. The preceding recording is for entertainment purposes only. And the views expressed in this podcast do not necessarily represent the views of Why Would You Make This, its owners, employees, or associates.